Hi, welcome to uh, the general functional group update. My name is Sid and I want to discuss a few things. Um, first of all, there's a, an initiative to make GitLab um, users download Enterprise Edition by default. Um, right now we have, a, um, we steer most of our users to download Community Edition because that's the only way to use Community Edition features without the license. But um, when talking to users, uh, they say a few things um, like, they're using CE, it's a great product and actually um, great startups like Equipment Share say, look, I would, I would love to buy EE, but I looked into the documentation and it seems pretty hard. And also, they know what they're getting, but a lot of CE users don't really know what they're getting. So we've got two problems. First of all, upgrading is hard. Second of all, they, uh, they don't know the features they would, would be getting. So what we're going to do is we're going to steer users towards downloading Enterprise Edition. And when you install that, it will function just like community edition. So no next screens, no interstitials, no nothing. It just functions. But in the interface um, or in the settings and things like that, we can expose EE features. Say like, hey, here would be an EE feature. If you want to try it for 30 days, click this link. So we'd have a way for people to uh, easily try out EE features and, and therefore get more people exposed to that. If they don't want to use the EE features after 30 days, it just reverts to community edition. Um, if they do want to use them, they fill out a form inside the product and they can instantly uh, purchase their license. Um, another thing I wanted to, uh, to highlight is a page of the whole software development life cycle. So this talks a bit about the, the different stacks that are developing. And um, there's a, uh, if you look at our Google Drive, there's a, um, there's a document called conversational development stack, which, uh, um, which details a few more from our partners. But I think these are the, the five main ones. So we got our stack. Hopefully you're familiar with it, uh, all the way from Mattermost to Kubernetes. You got the GitHub stack um, using Slack, GitHub issues and boards, Travis CI, Heroku, and New Relic. You got the uh, Atlassian stack, uh, HipChat, Jira, Trello, uh, Bitbucket, etc. You got the uh, uh, Amazon stack, which interestingly uh, also uses Jira, uh, code commit, code pipeline, code deploy, CloudWatch, and ECS. And you can kind of have the, the legacy open source software, IRC, Redmine, Camboards, SVN, Jenkins, and Nagios. And what, you, what you're going to see in the marketplace is that more and more people are going to go towards an integrated stack. Um, GitHub has a really hard time here, uh, especially self-hosted because they're not really selling the other products. Uh, they, uh, they try, they're now trying something with a marketplace, but it's still um, not a, especially for self-hosted, that's not an optimal experience. I also think UX wise, it's never going to be a good experience, even uh, with SaaS. We, we, we found out after we integrated GitLab CI that having it integrated in the product is so much better. So that's where we uh, that's where we can make a, a major impact. I said a quick question. Sure. Prometheus does uh, GitHub and Atlassian and Amazon. Do they have like a built-in performance monitoring as well? Um, so, no, they they don't. Um, so GitHub has no CI built-in, no deployment built-in, no measuring built-in, no chat built-in. So these are all separate products. Um, so I put the most popular one on here. Uh, you can use multiple solutions with GitHub, but the thing is you'll have to configure it yourself and you won't see it in the merge request, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
uh, GitHub is seem to be betting that um, um, there would be like best in class products developing. And I think the, the most obvious complementary product is CI. And as you recently saw with the blog post from Heroku, GitLab CI is now overtaking Travis CI in popularity. Um, so I, I think there, it's, it's a flawed idea that you can be a platform and then have best of breed, uh, so-called best of breed tools. Um, you see that when, when, when GitHub launched their marketplace recently, most of the stuff that's in that marketplace, you just get, with GitLab, you just get it by default. Like you don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to go to a marketplace and click anything. And it's integrated into the product, which makes it a lot easier to use. And where we don't have it, we're, we or the rest of our community can add it. So I, I, I think they're, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly they're thinking, obviously, but, but they kind of, um, I, th I think they're, the, the DevOps life cycle is so hard or, or it's so complex and, and it's so bothersome to set up. I think there, there should be a, a product that, that, that helps you with it. And um, um, I think now open source allows the best developers in the world to collaborate on one product and make that better. So I, uh, I, I think that's a winning strategy. And Atlassian has all the products. So that's, that's a win on their side, but uh, except, by the way, except for measuring, they don't have a, a, a default measuring solution, but they don't have, don't, they've not really integrated it. Like HipJet completely separate from Jira and then Jira separate from Trello and Trello separate from Bitbucket and Bitbucket separate from testing, which would be Bamboo. So uh, for, for self-hosted. So it's kind of, they, they're selling it. You can't even buy the licenses in one go, but also they're kind of separate products and you, you gotta pay a reseller to set it up correctly for you. Any other questions? Cool. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, Mark's DevOps vision. Um, where he's, he's, he's looking at different things. Um, first of all, we got to make idea to production a lot easier to, to adopt. I think we have too few people using it right now. That's fine. We, we always started like that, uh, but then we've got to iterate our way to, to something that is very easy to use. Um, he's looking into cloud development, like uh, the, the online IDE space, but also lots of ops features, um, which is like make it easier for teams to, to manage a, a Kubernetes cluster. And to a GitLab pass, um, this is like going straight after Heroku. If you, uh, so Heroku is the way you, you push a repository and it, everything just works. And that's where we're going with GitLab. You, you push a repository or you, you start a new project and CI and CD and code quality metrics, they all, and, and just metrics, um, it all just works. And we're doing work with uh, an, an auto-generated uh, CI file so that you no longer have to add uh, a gitlab.ci.yaml uh, file, but it's, it's just there. Um, GitLab figures out the best configuration. We're doing work with CD. Uh, we already ship Canary deploys, but where we're looking at incremental rollouts. Dimitri is working on code quality metrics so that by default, you not just not get, you, you get not just CI, which tells you whether your code is broken, but you also get an indication if your code quality is going up or down, which I think is, is really useful and it's supposed to land in 9.3. Um, to make a real alternative for Heroku, there might be some other stuff we, uh, we to solve. Um, what Heroku, for example, does, it allows you to spin uh, clusters down to like zero nodes. So why we 
while we can offer like auto scaling, if you get more people using your application, we spin up more on Kubernetes. Uh, we cannot spin down to zero nodes yet. To, to do that, you have to um, kind of, when there's a request coming in, when there's zero nodes, you have to sponge those up, wait a while, and then spin up the, so quickly spin up the container and then release the requests. That's maybe a bit far out there for us. Uh, and I think for now, uh, it's already pretty great that we can, uh, um, if, if we get it very usable to use um, uh, auto deploy. But you can imagine if you have like 300 merge requests in action and 300 review apps, it, it might get a bit expensive to have a complete uh, cluster for all and, and spinning down to zero would be, would be pretty awesome. Other things, uh, feature flags is, is something that I think lots of companies have like homebrew solutions for, we can do better. Um, the version checker, like checking for security vulnerabilities and your dependencies is a very obvious feature. And last but not least, uh, artifact management. Um, I think it's one of the missing pieces of our puzzle. I think uh, Pivotal and, 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 and other users um, they, when they use GitLab, they always need GitLab and then an artifact uh, management system. And artifact management means as much as you got a way to um, uh, push and pull your, your binaries. And we got that for Docker containers. So we come with a, a, con a container registry, but we don't have it for all the programming languages. Um, so you have the, the uh, Java programming language and many others, and they, they are used to their own uh, packaging system. So um, I, think, I think we wanna, we wanna do something there. Um, the, um, the primary tool now that is used is Artifactory, and we, uh, we want to have a look at that. And it's funny because it's, it's supposed to be open source, but we have a really hard time locating the source code. Uh, so it's easy to download like the open source version, uh, but it's very hard to find the source code of it. So I don't think they're getting a lot of contributions from the wider community. So for them, probably open source is more of a go-to market than, than a way to collaborate with the wider community. Um, all these tools are written in Java, and I, I don't think we want to ship with a, a JVM attached. We might want to, uh, we'll have a look at it but uh, it might be time to rewrite some of those artifact management systems in, in Go, um, just like the Docker container registry. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to highlight is to get all features from a consistent source. Um, right now, if you look, we have a very high feature velocity every month. And if you look at our different pages, not all features are on there. On our comparison pages, not the, new, the newest features are not on there. On our product page, where you can compare different versions, not all features are on there. If you look at our feature page, not all features are on there. Uh, and one of the problems is that you kind of have, you get a new feature, you have to add them to all those pages and people forget. And there's no, there's no right flow for it. So uh, I'm working with Connor to um, who's, who's done a, a really good job of, of trying to consolidate that. So we already consolidated the uh, uh, comparisons page so that you list the feature one and then once and then say which comparisons it has to appear on. And now we're gonna try to simplify the product page so that you don't have these big matrices for people to, to work their way through. And then we hope to get to the features page itself so that we can also list them uh, there and this way, if we have a new feature, PMs add it to this comparison of YAML once and, and it shows up on all the different uh, pages. Because it's a bit of a waste if we spend a lot of time making a feature, but then don't, don't tell people about it. Yeah, these were some things I wanted to highlight, but I'd love to have questions and I'm gonna see if I can find the chat.
AJ asked EE Premium, AJ, if you could elaborate because the context is now gone. I couldn't see the Yeah, yeah, your, your first one. slide uh, mm -hmm. there where you talked about uh, pushing uh, by default uh, people getting them to, to enterprise edition, right? I just wanted to ensure like we're pushing them to premium, right? So out of the box, they're getting premium functionality, right? Features and functionality as opposed to, to starter edition. I just want to clearly understand that. Yeah, so, so the thing is, we're pushing them to download Enterprise Edition, which is a code base, it's yep. a subscription. And we, we, we hook them up without, um, without any of the Enterprise features. Because what we want is we, we can only um, make them download Enterprise Edition by default if it's a great experience. And that means no registration screen, no nothing. Now, you don't want, you probably see the problem with us giving away all the enterprise edition features without someone registering, without them even being aware that they're using the enterprise edition features per se. So we're not, we're not going to do that. Also, many of the enterprise features are not very useful if you're just starting. Like if you just download a GitLab, you don't need any of the enterprise features. They, they, as, as it says, they're, they're features that are more likely to be useful if you're using it with over 100 people. So day one, you're not going to have a need for them. So we're not going to give them to them on day one. We're going to expose them in the interface. So at some point, they'll be like, hey, why can't I turn on approvers? Oh, it's grayed out. You can set, sign up for a trial. And then they can sign up, sign up for a trial. And, and uh, then they have to like, hey, say which company they're from, et cetera. And then we have a way to get in touch with them. And after the trial, we, we ask them whether they wanna, gonna, wanna get a subscription. So it's download enterprise edition by default. Okay, I got it. E features, and then get a trial. And the trial obviously will be EEP. Uh, I don't think we'll, uh, we'll even have an option there. Okay, now I get the flow. Thank you very much for uh, elaborating there, thank you. Yeah. And I get that this is counterintuitive. Um, and that's, that's why I wanted to highlight it. So I'm very happy with your question. Elsha asks, when will this be implemented? Um, we see that this is something really important. So um, I think we're talking 9.5 or something right now. Uh, we've still got a bit of work to do. Obviously, this will pay out over the longer term because you get people downloading GitLab now. So it's like it takes a year or two before that bubbles up, but, um, but we do think it's gonna make a major difference in how many people choose to go to EE. It might go from, hey, currently that's about 2%. If we can get that to 6% or something like that, that would be really good for the company. Oh, and Mike is giving a more detailed answer. Thanks, Mike, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5. Ah, John asked, didn't Red Hat come out with a platform as well? They did. So if you go to, if you go to the Google Drive, and you go to conversational development stack, and I'll add the words SDLC to the title so you can find it, SDLC. You can, uh, you can see the other stacks. Um, those are not on that uh, web page uh, because they, many of these people at the same time partners of GitLab. So uh, we don't wanna highlight them as competitors um, at the same time, which makes it a bit awkward. But uh, yeah, there's, there's many, many other people trying the same thing. Hey Sid, quick question. Uh, I really like that issue about <clears throat> redeveloping the, the way we communicate the features. Is it, I may have noticed this, is the layout gonna be different? Because right now we have it on the products page, we've got the pricing and then that matrix. Is that gonna be like a standalone page or how's that workflow gonna look on the website in the future? Um, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Just, just one second. Um, can you repeat the question? Yeah. yeah, no problem. That issue where we're consolidating the features and, and you know, reevaluating how we show it on the website, what is that workflow going to look like? Because right now we've got it on the products page, you've got pricing, and then if you scroll down long enough, you get to the, all the features. How will that workflow look like after you're, you're done with that issue? Yeah, and the linked issue is an idea, but uh, basically we're going to base it on what you see at the Salesforce uh, website, where you just have 
uh, we're gonna have four boxes. The boxes are gonna be a bit taller, like they need to contain like the 30 features. Each feature will just be a single line, um, but we're gonna have the action buttons both at the top and the bottom, so that even if you don't scroll, you can quickly um, um, go to them. And we're not going, no longer gonna have this enormous matrix, which is like too much, not, not yeah, it's, it's, it's not very uh, easy to parse that. Awesome, awesome, thank you. There's some, uh, some people commenting and how hard it is to integrate all the Atlassian tools. Clement asks, would it ever make sense to combine the code bases into one? Um, obviously that would save us a lot of work. The problem is, is that then it's really hard to like separate out which features are proprietary and not. And some, some people don't want any proprietary code on their system. I think it's a minority of the market, but that minority uh, is, 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 is some that people we want to keep happy as well. So I think for, they, they wouldn't like it. So, so therefore we have to stay two code bases. John May, can we have a report back to us that they tried the EP feature? Yeah, so John, the idea is if you wanna try a feature, they just, they push a button to sign up for a trial and in the product you fill out the trial form. So they got all the EP features at that point and we got the, we got the trial report. Yeah, just to add, we, we do record that people are using it, so we can actually see that they are using particular features. I think that was Sean was asking. So Connor says, a problem on the websites that the free trial buttons on the E started and not under premium. Yeah, that is uh, bad. And I thought May 1, we would have a change so that EEP was the standard trial thing. Um, as far as I care, let's move that button. Andrew is a fan of Nexus. Why is that, uh, Andrew? Um, the user interface is nicer and it supports more types. It, it's not just um, Maven Java artifacts. It supports NPM and Bower and a whole bunch of other things as well. And the source code is readily available on GitHub. And it's um, Eclipse license. Cool. Um, I think uh, Artifactory has pretty universal support as well. I know for sure that they support uh, NPM. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is just integrate it into GitLab, just like uh, uh, the Docker container registry. So that would, should be a super good uh, user experience. Cool. Dao says, why not make the open source, hey, why, why make it not easy for us instead of for them? Um, no, that's in response to um, Jason's concern with my comment about Sugar CRM earlier up, because I know that Sugar CRM had a similar model with the Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. They had a single code base where every E only code, the proprietary licensed code, had like markers around it, and then they had a preprocessing script that stripped everything inside those markers and left, you know, only the actual open source code. While the main code people were working in was still mixed license which would, I mean, it's hard to set that up, but still uh, it would make our developer life a lot easier. It would only be that pre-processing step that we need for that loud minority that wants open source only code. But this is something that I've been talking about a little bit with, uh, you know, Marion, Stan, uh, Mike, I'll create an issue at some point, because I was talking to Marion a couple of weeks ago about how much time we are really wasting because we need to have separate code bases and we have to merge back and forth and we have so many, um, you know, merge conflicts there. 
that this would save us hundreds of man hours every month if we just had something that was easier um, for us, if a little bit harder for those loud, um, that loud minority. Anyway, um, something to keep in mind. Yeah, I think that as long as you output uh, a repository that has only like open source, freely licensed code without any caveats, I think people would be fine with that. So, cool. Um, thanks everyone for joining the call and all the questions and comments. Greatly appreciate it. Have a good day.